So welcome um, folks to the Farm to School Educated Education and Marketing webinar um, so with strategies for food service professionals. And this is put on by the 10 cents a meal team. Uh, we're excited to be joined live today by food service directors from grantee school districts receiving 10 cents a meal funding to support your farm to school efforts. And uh, we're gonna share some tips from your peers about how to support students in trying new foods on the lunch line. Uh, we're also recording the webinar and we'll make it available to other school districts hoping to learn best practices for farm to school learning activities in the future. So let's get started. Next slide, please. My name is Tori Craig and I'm the Outreach and Communications Coordinator for the 10 cents a meal for school kids and farms program with Groundwork Center for Resilient Communities. Uh, Groundwork Center is a Traverse City-based nonprofit working to protect Michigan communities through advocacy. We do work in local food and farms, clean energy and water, and strong cities and towns. We're also joined today by food service directors from 10 cents grantee districts who have, who have launched successful farm to school educational programming in their school systems, including Tom Freitas from Traverse City Area Public Schools, Beth Cavanaugh from Public Schools of Petoskey, who will be joining us on the phone today, and Dan Gorman, who's the food service director at Montague Area Public Schools and Whitehall District Schools. Next slide. So I'm going to give an overview of the 10 cents program uh, to get us started. And then Tom Freitas, who has been working uh, to promote farm to school in his district for years, will share some of his experience with how learning opportunities can impact student consumption in the cafeteria. And then Beth and Dan are gonna share stories of pro programs that they've implemented successfully and the key collaborators that make them possible. So at the end, we'll have time for a live Q&A with our speakers, and you're welcome to submit any questions as we go along in the chat box, and we will be sure to address them during the Q&A. And you'll also be able to ask questions directly at that time. Um, I also, I wanna say thank you to Traverse Bay Area Intermediate School District, who we worked with to create this webinar. TBA ISD is a longtime partner of Groundwork Center and a leader in farm to school in the nor lower Northwest Michigan region. They have developed farm to school curriculum vetted by curriculum spe specialists to meet teaching standards, which we will feature in our companion webinar that we'll release later this month for educators. I'll send out this link uh, to the webinar and hope that you'll share it with administrators and teachers in your districts to help them get on board with your farm to school mission. Next slide. So what is 10 cents a meal? Uh, most, most of you here are familiar with the program, but I will, I will give a brief overview. Um, so 10 cents a meal for school kids and farms is a state pilot program administered by Michigan Department of Education that provides match funding of up to 10 cents per meal to grant winning districts for local produce purchases. You can see in the map we have here on the screen that there are 32 districts uh, currently receiving funding in the 2017-2018 school year in Lower Northwest, Western, and Southeast Michigan. And um, we have representatives from our 10 cents partner organizations on the call from uh, Michigan Department of Agriculture and Rural Development, MSU Center for Regional Food Systems, Michigan Department of Education, and Networks Northwest, so that when we do our Q&A at the end, uh, you'll be able to direct questions to them as well. Uh, for more information about the 10 cents program and also how to bring 10 cents a meal to your region, if you are following along with the recorded webinar and are interested in bringing 10 cents uh, to your district or a district near you, you can visit our website listed here, which is 10centsmichigan.org. And though the grant involves procurement of local foods, today we're going to focus on the education and marketing tools that have been proven to, to get kids excited about trying the local foods that are being menued in the cafeteria. Legislators who are in support of 10 cents have said that they want to see these learning activities happening to support the locally procured menus, and we want to help you make this happen. Next slide. <clears throat> Excuse me. So why educate? Uh, because we've seen that success in uh, menuing local foods depends on going beyond the lunch line. 
Food Corps is a national leader in farm to school, and they're a nonprofit that partners with AmeriCorps to provide farm to school lessons in school districts in 17 states, including Washington, D.C., and we're lucky to have some service members here in Michigan supporting the work. Um, Food Corps released a study recently that says that students who participated in 10 or more farm to school lessons per year eat an average of three-fourths of a cup of fruit and vegetables. And this is double the consumption of districts where no education is offered. So we're really excited to see data like that um, affirming the impact of hands-on learning. And this mirrors other studies in support of multiple exposure, um, saying that if kids are able to try new foods in multiple settings uh, within the school system, they're more likely to self-select them in the lunch line. Next slide. I also want to mention um, that here in Michigan, we're ripe to seize the opportunity as the second most agriculturally diverse state in the nation. And here you can see the wide variety of produce grown by Michigan farms. I also want to mention that many of these, many of these products are available during the winter season, especially if you're sourcing through um, the Michigan food processing business, Farm to Freezer. Next slide. So now we're going to hear from Tom Freitas. Um, Tom and, and Traverse City Area Public Schools have been doing farm to school work for over five years, including with Food Corps. And Tom has seen great impact in the cafeteria with students self selecting more produce. So, Tom, I'm going to pass it over to you. All right, thank you. I hope you all are getting a little sunshine like we are out here. Uh, it's been a cloudy winter. Uh, as you can see there, Megan uh, McDermott, who is uh, one of our early food core people, at least while I've been here, is uh, handing out some Romanesco, uh, which is a cauliflower, a green cauliflower, which the kids may call a um, Christmas tree or a spaceship. But uh, that was one of the taste testings that did make it to our menu because the kids did really like it. Uh, the farm to freezer does mix the Romanesco in with some other colored cauliflower, which really helps set it off when we put it on the menu. Um, when Speaking of the taste test, one of the things we do is the taste test over there. And what they do is they get to vote for it, as you can see on the uh, left hand of the screen there. The kids love to get uh, their little stickers and pick which they like. They can either choose uh, tried it, liked it, or loved it. Uh, we don't ever have, don't like it. Uh, we don't yuck our yum over here. We make sure the kids at least tried it. If they don't like it, they don't have to say anything about it, but um, don't discourage the ones that do like it or love it or, or at least are trying it. So uh, that is all Food Corps related. And I learned a lot when I started watching Food Corps and uh, they really brought great lessons to the kids and the kids really responded by eating well in our cafeterias. Um, one of the things the teachers did is take those taste test results and they turned them into a curriculum. As you can see, they have a chart there uh, that helps with the math. So uh, it's, it's well blended. I, I know not everybody can have food core, but they are putting the lessons together as they, as they, they said it, TBA, ISD. And um, you can get those lessons and hopefully talk to teachers into using them. Uh, one of the things I always recommend is just like when we first started farm school um, 15 years ago is take it in small steps. You don't have to do it all uh, in one big hurdle. You can start with taste tests. We're now expanding the taste tests out to other buildings using that same food core idea. And it's going over well. The kids love to try it. We just did it this uh, past week at our Jerry Knoll Elementary and the kid, we had 300 kids tried it and 52% liked the uh, parsnip chips, which we got that recipe from Food Corps. They had done that a couple weeks earlier and they also got a good response on the parsnip chips. Uh, another thing that we just tried that we are menuing in February is the uh, Moroccan salad that will be going on our menu shortly. It's a carrot salad that went over very well with the kids. Uh, so we have put it on our menu. So it not only helps teach the kids, it helps teach us so that we menu things and expand our operations through what we learn from Food Corps. So uh, it's a win-win for everybody involved. The principals love it because they see the kids eat well. 
that is a school that does take a lot more fruits and vegetables just because they aren't afraid to try it after so many uh, lessons and taste tests. They now will try almost anything we put out on a salad bar. Um, not gonna say they love everything, but they will try it. So it, it's definitely something that I'd recommend for any school to incorporate those lessons into their curriculum with or without food core. Like I said, it's available at TBAISD and uh, go and take a look at it. Yeah, I think your teachers will like it. Um, any questions at this time or are we taking questions now or at the end? We'll take questions at the end. Yeah, oh, okay. if, if folks have questions and you want to send them along while they're fresh in your mind, go ahead and send them through the chat. And another thing, just uh, on a taste test, when I did the Cherry Knowles, they got excited about that. They just got a grant to expand their wellness, and they're having a folk night, and they want to also do a taste test. So one of our people are volunteering to do that taste test. I know Beth is coming up. will be a little more creative than we are, but we're uh, expanding out on the taste test, and I think Beth will tell you how to do it a little bit more with the help of the uh, parents, I believe. Great, thank you, Tom. Yep. Um, so next up, as Tom said, we have Beth Kavanaugh. Um, so Beth has had great success establishing a culture of collaboration around farm to school in her district, including support from administrators, teachers, and parents. Uh, we're really excited about her Try It Tuesday program. So Beth, let me make sure that I've unmuted you and then you can take it away. Okay, Beth, you're on. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to take the next few minutes to talk to you about the Public Schools of Petoskey's Try It Tuesday program. In September of 2016, the Public Schools of Petoskey's was a recipient of a grant to support making healthier food choices easier to make. This Building Healthy Communities project was coordinated by the Health Department of Northwest Michigan with support from the MSU Extension, the Local Food Alliance, Groundwork Center for Resilient Communities, Food Corps, Smarter School Lunchroom, Cherry Capital, and Grain Train Natural Foods. Our grant funding came at a perfect time to be able to respond to students, principals, teachers, and parents' requests to revise lunch menus and include healthier choices, including adding additional fruits and vegetables from local suppliers. Funding from the grant was used to launch farm to school initiatives throughout the school system. Through this grant, food service equipment was purchased along with educational and promotional materials, including the training of volunteers for our speakers in the classrooms. One powerful strategy was to provide monthly taste testings with recipes from the Harvest of the Month flyers using locally grown fruits and vegetables. Our taste testing days are called Try It Tuesday and they take place on the second Tuesday of each month. There is a 15 minute block of time in each classroom for trained volunteers to deliver the samples, conduct the class in a taste test, and collect voting cards. Tried it, liked it, loved it. The three agreements the students must follow are, don't yuck my yum, and you must try it since it is, try it Tuesday. However, if a student needs to work up to tasting the recipe, they can use their other senses by touching, smelling, licking, and yes, of course, some students listen to our recipe. Our final agreement is everyone needs to try it at one time. The volunteer counts to three and then we sample the recipe together. The results provide information about which recipes I should incorporate into the cafeteria menu on a weekly or monthly basis. For example, in 2017, our students tried radish slaw. 74% of the students either liked or loved it. Radish slaw is now on the menu every month. 64% of the students either liked or loved black bean and corn salad. This recipe is now on the menu every month. If we did not have our students sample these recipes, they would walk right by them in the lunch line. Try It Tuesday success started the day we gained approval from our district. I, along with Megan McDermott and Lynn DeMore, met with the district's curriculum director. We discussed the Try It Tuesday program and how it correlates with the STEM program. Teaching, material, ma teaching materials were provided to the district per the STEM program. My next meeting took place with the superintendent and business manager. Once they were on board, I set up meetings with the principals. The principals met with the teachers and I had open meetings at every school building to answer questions and set up time slots with the teachers. 
In October and November of 2017, Try It Tuesday was taking place in half of the classrooms in the district for the elementary level. By December 2017, we were in every classroom. I work with the teachers to determine the schedule for the classroom visitation. I email a short three to five minute video that relates to the featured fruit or vegetables of the month and the teacher shows this to the classroom a day or two before the event. Parent volunteers who are trained in the program coordinate with the teachers about hand washing, food allergies, and classroom management techniques. We have one to two volunteers per grade level at each school building. I provide the volunteers with a script for the classroom. These scripts talk about the fruit or vegetable of the month, including the benefits of the item they are sampling. Harvest of the Month flyers are provided to the teachers and sent home in Friday folders. This allows families to make the recipe and sample it together. The results are tabulated and posted in the cafeteria and shared with the secretaries to include in monthly parent newsletters. Our positive, and our positive outcomes and stories have been off the charts. There is reduced food waste with an increase in student consumption of fruits and vegetables during lunch. This is noticed not only by the lunchroom aides and cooks, but by the custodial staff. They literally grab my arm, walk me to the trash and show me how much food is not wasted anymore. It's, it's, it's just huge. Um, a secretary was hesitant on trying herb roasted squash fries. She didn't know what herb roasted meant. Now herb roasted ve vegetables are the staple in her household for her family. A student has claimed Friday as try it Friday at home for dinner. She cooks with her grandmother on Friday after school and they make the recipe of the month for her family to try. Everyone must take a bite and they vote just like at school. On numerous occasions, I've been stopped by students and parents in the grocery store asking me for the recipe of the month. I walk with the students and the parents through the produce section and show them what to purchase and tell them how to make the item. Our volunteers are our biggest challenge. Recruiting volunteers to spend two to two and a half hours once a month in the classroom is a tricky task. We have teamed up with the PTO, sent home flyers to parents, printed information on the back of our menus, and we set up tables at parent-teacher conferences and school carnivals. To date, we have 25 plus volunteers that arrive in the classrooms each month. If you would like to replicate the program in your district, I am available for questions and Petoskey's doors are always open. If you have a chance, please come and participate in one of our Try It Tuesday programs. I'm extremely excited about Tuesday's Try It Tuesday, which is beet hummus. If you enjoy beets, I will welcome you into our district. Nice, thank you, Beth. It's exciting to hear about the, the deep impact that your program's having both on students and the secretary and to hear about um, the families approaching you in the grocery store, mm -hmm. that those eating habits are changing even in the home. Um, so finally, we have Dan Gorman, um, who has uh, some great parent and, and teacher allies who are helping him to do farm to school work in his district. And before Dan gets started, I just want to remind everyone that if you have questions, please send them along through the chat box and we will address them shortly in the Q&A. Go ahead, Dan. Oh, I'm sorry, you're still muted. Oh. Okay. Now you're unmuted. I see how you are. <laughs> well, uh, hi everyone. Thanks for being here. Um, I'm excited to tell you about the program. Um, we we do a, a bulk of our work with uh, um, culinary students from the Career Tech Center in Muskegon, um, and that's a picture there of a few of them working on something. If you want to go to the next slide. Um, so really, and, and I think Tom mentioned this a little bit about, uh, for a long time I didn't do anything farm to schoolish because I just thought I had to do everything. I didn't think, um, I thought I had to start a school garden and a cooking class and also do taste its and all those type of things. And so I never um, jumped into farm to school because I was um, pretty intimidated by having to do everything. But once I just started doing little parts and, and saying, you know what, Doing a taste it is a um, is farm to school. Just buying local um, fruits and vegetables to serve on Friday is farm to school. I think that helped move me along. And I think the other thing that um, 
as I went along with this is I, I really wanted to expand our program and do more things. And I came to the realization that I couldn't do it alone. Um, and that, that it's, that I wouldn't be able to accomplish the things I wanted to accomplish if I didn't get help. And I just, I kind of looked for those allies of, of people who could join us. And, and so we have worked with the Muskegon Career Tech Center. They have a culinary program. And so we've worked with them for the last um, three years um, doing tastings in um, uh, both of our school districts and all of our buildings. And we normally do them three times a year. Um, and, we, uh, and, and we put it under the umbrella of Cultivate Michigan. So Cultivate Michigan is a, a statewide program that's trying to encourage institutions to purchase um, local fruits and vegetables. And uh, so we, um, we kind of use this as our um, umbrella that we were going to go over um, and, and use it. And, and we didn't always, we didn't always reflect. So Cultivate Michigan will come out with um, four featured foods every year. And we didn't always feature, we didn't always choose the ones that they were doing. Sometimes we went off script, but the um, Cultivate Michigan marketing always worked for us. And now they have such a, a, a rich um, variety of different products, um, we can really pick and choose. If you'll go back to the previous slide. Um, and and so, so we use Cultivate Michigan and then, then we, um, form this relationship with the Career Tech Center. And so the chef instructor and I met and we were talking about different things that we could do and, and things that her, her students could do. And, and so we just, um, we just finished in the last two days, we, um, we served 4,000 samples of two bean recipes that the kids developed. And, and um, so how it, how it worked and the process for it with these students is um, probably about two months ago, um, the chef instructor um, told her students that we were going to develop recipes around Michigan beans. Um, and the kids were challenged to find um, different recipes that might fit into the school setting around Michigan beans. They, um, and, and they came up with about 25 different recipes. And um, myself and uh, one of my staff, we went down and we taste tested all the recipes with um, 10 or 13 of their students. And we talked about them. We said, well, this is a fit or this, you know, uh, this is a really complicated recipe that might not work in schools. Uh, this is really expensive. That might not work. Um, and then we narrowed it down. And so we made recipe tweaks and came up with nine recipes that we were going to try and we went through and, and tried that and narrowed that down to two that we we were going to do in the buildings and so um, once we've done that over a couple month period um, they kind of tweaked the recipe one of the things that's really nice and I'll, I'll show you the tech center also has a graphics department and so they print up these recipe cards whoa and so it's a two two-sided laminated recipe card and um, it has the recipe that they they came up with and so we did um, Brandon's two bean pocket and then also Emily's picnic bean salad were the recipes that we came up with the Career Tech Center printed off um, 3,000 copies of these recipes and we sent them home with all our students so not only do they get to taste them during the school they get to take a recipe card home um, and they don't charge us for it either which is awesome because um, it really uh, it, it really enhances kind of the quality of our program and, and what people think about our program and so so we did um, we came up with the two recipes and so on Tuesday uh, they had done a lot of pre-prep on Monday it all got delivered to one of our kitchens on Tuesday and then um, 10 of the um, uh, student chefs along with the chef instructor came and helped uh, do the final prep in our kitchen and then divide it so so 
all the food comes into one building and that has to be divided to go to eight different buildings. And so they separate it out and divide it and then they discuss how's it gonna go in each building. And so on Wednesday, um, we did the taste test in our four Whitehall buildings. And then on Thursday, we did the taste test in um, our Montague, four Montague buildings. And the, the thing that I think when I look at collaboration and, and try to think how it works and what's really, I think, special about this relationship is um, this is not the chef instructor at the Career Tech Center just being, um, she's not just being nice doing this extra thing. This, this fulfills a core function of her academic needs for her kids. Um, this gives her kids an opportunity to get real life experience, um, to practice their skills on doing large um, production. In the past, we've done butternut squash. And so we needed 300 pounds of diced butternut squash. So those students got the opportunity to practice their knife skills on peeling and dicing 300 pounds of butternut squash. And that's a real benefit for those kids. Um, the other thing that's really cool is there's not enough um, adult supervision to micromanage these kids when they're in buildings. So the kids are, they're given the guidelines, they're being told what they need to do, um, and then they're responsible. And, and so if, you know, so, so they have to work their timing and they have to look at their pace. And if they're not paying attention, you know, they might, we've run into situations before where it's like, okay, I've got 150 kids coming in two minutes. Are you ready to serve? And the answer might be no, we're not. And so it might be a mess and it might be sloppy. But that sloppy mess really teaches those um, culinary students a lot um, and gives them more of a real world thing than they can get just in the classroom with having a teacher says, say when you're in the real world, you really need to, um, you really need to have pace and you really need to understand it. So this really gives them that real world understanding. Um, the failures are just real valuable um that we have and and then so the downside on my end is you know we're supposed to do a taste test and it doesn't start at the beginning of the lunch it starts in the middle of the lunch and and so that's not a critical thing for our end either so it's been really um really a valuable relationship that we have um we started it with some grant funding um we we did the farm to school grants that helped with different parts of it but we've really reached a point with it where if there was no grant funding for it, we would still continue it because it's a core part of what we do in school food service. And it's a core part of what she does to educate her second year kids. And so that really is the um, kind of that benefit. And those are kind of the relationships that, that I, I'm continuing to look for in education where, you know, if, if we can fill a core need of what we're supposed to do in education, um, you know, the, the other things I just want to say about a little bit about collaboration, um, if, if you can find a passionate teacher in your building, um, you can do a lot of really cool things. Um, I, I have a tendency to say yes to people who are excited and passionate about doing things. Um, and, and a lot of times if you have a teacher who's on the inside, they can bring everyone else along with them. Um, and, and sometimes I find these people because they're the ones who complain about the food. You know, they're the ones who say, well, we should do better. And, and you kind of grab them and say, yeah, we should, what can we do? You know, how can we get kids involved to help? How can we, you know, cause, cause I, you know, I have all the limitations that everyone else has and, and I, and I'm really upfront with those limitations. It's like, you know what, I would love farm fresh food every day for every meal, but, but there's limitations to doing that. And, and where can we help? Can I have, you know, can I have your classroom every day to shuck corn once a week? Um, you know, those type of things. And, and when you find that, um, you, you really uh, can find benefits. Um, and the kids love it. I mean, the kids, kids love doing this stuff and having voice. Um, the, the other thing I'll, I'll say about um, collaboration is, um, 
I, I have also reached out um, to community grants and that type of stuff to um, help fund it. Um, I, I have a, a staff member that I funded for the past three years um, solely on um, a hospital community benefit grant. Every hospital is required to have a community benefit component and they give grants. And, and it's usually done off of, they do a health assessment survey of their area. Childhood obesity usually hits that assessment. And so when you're attacking those things, you can, um, you can ap apply for those grants um, and, and do it. And then also um, there's SNAP ed programs that the YMCA does in our area and also MSU Extension that is part of their core programming. And if you can get that into your school districts, um, that's really, really positive. Um, next slide. And then, and then so just finally, just to sum up on Cultivate Michigan, um, it is a, uh, I said earlier, it's a statewide program. Um, so if you sign up for it, um, they will send you when they come out seasonally with their um, fruits and vegetables, they'll send you kind of a planning packet and posters and clings, um, window clings and those type of things. And then all of this stuff is downloadable at cultivatemichigan.org. Um, this is a, it's an MSU program through the Center for Regional Food Systems. Um, and they're really looking for ways to kind of support um, getting more local foods um, into institutions and, and, and that type of stuff. So it's a, a really positive um, organization. All right, I think that's it for me. Great, thanks, Dan. Um, I just want to uh, really highlight what Dan was mentioning about working with educators and making sure that um, your collaboration is meeting their needs. Uh, their learning objectives for their students and mention that we have some great tips about how to do that in our companion webinar for educators. So I will make sure to get that to you all and you can use that as a resource um, when you're entering into these conversations about collaboration to really have a rich discussion about how you can help each other um, meet the needs of both the food service program and the needs that educators have. And I'm, I'm really glad that each of our speakers um, mentioned that in order to get started with Farm to School, you don't need to do it all. You can start with um, one, one program, like a taste test, or maybe something that is in alignment uh, with your school's wellness policy, um, and, and let the Farm to School um, program and collaboration really grow from that place as it gets established in your district. And I want to mention that I've spoken um, with many of you, um, all of our um, grantees for this school year, and folks are doing really exciting, interactive, inspiring work. So many of you are already making these things happen in your district. Um, and one of the most common struggles that I've heard from folks in our conversation is just getting that conversation started with administrators um, in, in moving towards this culture of collaboration among food service directors. So to get our Q&A started, I wondered if um, any of our speaker participants could speak to um, what has been helpful for them in um, starting that conversation with administrators. And I'm gonna unmute everyone so we can all participate in the Q&A. So I, I think the, the administrator piece um, really is just that, and it, it's really kind of a forever conversation that you have to continue to go back to, um, to help them understand the importance of how it connects with what their core goals are. They want successful students and um, healthy students make, make successful students. Um, but it really is um, having those opportunities to be around the administrators at administrative meetings and, and touching base with them and, and kind of uh, sharing what your success stories are and sharing the information. I, I know 
Um, you know, there was a couple studies that came out about, um, you know, kids, I think it was from California that, that kids had um, higher health standards also had higher test scores. And, and so I shared that information with them and, and said, gee, go figure. You know, that's so surprising that this is the truth. Um, <laughs> because it is, it's one of those, um, it's obvious, but not um, something that will be on the top of their mind. And so I think a lot of times, you know, I, I talked to a principal and he said, you know, we want to we want to show appreciation to the kids for um, for having good behavior. So we'd like to give them, you know, those big two and a half ounce cookies, you know, that are like 500 calories. And I'm kind of like, really, is that how we want to do this? And, and I really kind of said to him, it's like, you know, let's find something else. Let's do a little hard work and find another way to show appreciation than giving big cookies. Um, so um, I think I think it really is that ongoing conversation. And I feel my role in the district is um, to continue to have those conversations. When you want, when you come to administrators, bring a package that's already put together. Don't just kind of go in there and hope to be planning something, have it planned. Administrators don't want to take on the work. You need to get the work done. Like Dan said, you need champions in buildings. If you have a champion, bring that person along to say, hey, I'm going to do it. That's the most successful way to get anything through to a building is to come in prepared, be to sell the package whole and ready to go. And then administrators just sit back and say, oh yeah, if you've done all the work, come on in and let's get it started. And again, you need champions if you're gonna put in a curriculum and things like that. Those are great tips, thanks. Beth, do you have anything to add? Okay, so, um, for our participants out there, please feel free to contribute any questions that you have. You can either enter them in the chat box or I have unmuted everyone. So unless there's um, a chorus and we can't understand what folks are asking, we can just try to do a Q&A this way. So feel free to speak up if you have a question for any of our speakers or for any of the folks from the 10 cents team who are on the call. Actually, I have a couple questions for Beth about her. So is her try it Tuesday every Tuesday? And did her parent volunteer group, was that homegrown from her efforts or was there like a core of parents that helped grow that? No, those are great questions. Um, we are not we do not have our try it tuesday program every tuesday it is only once a month it's the second tuesday of every month and i worked with groundwork center and they helped compile a list of parent volunteers we had already had a group called parents for fresh foods and they wanted to see some kind of spark and kick to help our students make better food choices so some of those parents in that group stepped up and then Megan McDermott, uh, Lynn D. Moore, Jen Shop, and I worked together and came up with a training plan. Uh, Lindsay was also part of that. And we brought them all to a central location and kind of walked through, this is how it's going to be in the classroom. Um, and so it's, and then from there, it was just getting the word out to let other parents know, hey, this can be a fun time. This is volunteering in your child's classroom. And from there, it just picked up. A lot of the kickback that we have is parents have to leave work to come and volunteer their time. Um, or children are sick, so parents have to stay home and can't get there. And that's kind of been the downfall a little bit. But right now, we are at a steady 25. That's awesome. Thanks, Beth. Um, I had a question for you all. I was wondering if you could just speak a bit more to the impact that you've seen in the cafeteria after doing these taste tests. Maybe if you have a specific example of a taste test that you did and something that you've menued frequently that you see um, students self-selecting more of.
I can take our radish slaw um, recipe item that we tried. When we first sampled it, and it, you know, it, it was a 74% liked it and loved it. I was hesitant at putting it out there on that uh, menu, even weekly. So after we had it, I menued it twice that month, and we were running out of the product like halfway through the lunch lines. So right now we are actually making three four inch pans of the radish slaw when we make it. So all the students from beginning to end can go ahead and have that. So we have seen a huge increase in what the students are taking after we sample it. And that's true with anything, even the entrees, if you don't sample them first, it's going to take three or four times on the menu of a new entree before they're going to taste it. So if you, if you get the uh, produce out there and get them trying it before, you're that much farther ahead of them accepting it and trying it again, rather than having to wait to menu after menu. That's great. I'm excited to see uh, these results being put into practice. Does anyone else have questions out there? Alice, you can go to the next slide. Um, we came up with some ideas of things that you could contribute into the chat box if you're interested in sharing um, what you learned today, what you're planning to try in your district, or what you'd like more information about. Um, but I'll give just one more uh, minute for questions in case anyone has something they'd like to learn from these speakers. I do have a question. It's regarding having um, the samples and taste testing done during lunchtime. How do you battle the loudness with the students in order to get the message across? Mm -hmm. And who does that for you? You know, we, uh, um, our kids are kind of used to the taste test process now. So they know um, in a lot of the buildings we have microphones. And so we can kind of explain the process, but we've done it nine times now where um, where the kids kind of know and we put up signage so they know what it is. It isn't as the education piece is not as in depth as it would be if you did a classroom piece, um, which we also do a little bit of um, kind of the, the straight kind of uh, going to a classroom and do a harvest of the month presentation. But um, so the cafeteria piece, it's just kind of a different level where we're tasting it and then there's, you know, short conversations about what's going on. Um, we do, um, we have a newsletter that goes out to all the teachers about what's going on if they want to share it, but I don't think it's, okay. it's not incorporated fully. Um, so it isn't, it isn't like all the teachers share it or something like that. And we have Thank a separate you. area, we have a separate area where it's got souffle cups and um, obviously the posters up for the, which one they pick. Once you get a few kids taking stickers and putting them up on the poster, everybody wants to come over and get a sticker and put it on the poster. So they'll, if nothing else, they'll come and try it just simply to get a sticker to put on the poster. So that is your right. best friend to get the kids to participate. We Thank also, with, with our culinary program, it's part of salesmanship is part of what they're supposed to be learning. And so not only do they sell it to the kids as the kids are going, um, going by the table, they'll also go table to table. We find the high school group um, don't want to leave their seats and, you know, go up and, and find something out. So a lot of times we go table to table, encourage them to try those things. And that's part of the curriculum for the culinary students. Any more questions? I have one question. I saw it with your stickers. Do you get your tried it, liked it, loved it stickers anyplace special, or do you just not use that and you use generic? I use generic. I just get them from Staples. I try to have a book with several different kinds of stickers so that they can pick their favorite sticker. 
to put up on the board to make it a little more fun for them and encourage them to come up. But um, Food Corps may have their own. I'm not sure. I think they pretty much use generic too. Okay. We use generic on our posters, but then the kids get a sticker that says I try it, which I think I don't know if we get it from school specialty or, or there's a couple of places that it's the roll, big rolls that you get. Um, so, so the kids get a sticker that go on the poster that help us know whether they liked it. And then they get a sticker that goes on them that says, I tried it. And we, for our voting, we actually use um, photo boxes that I made into voting boxes by cutting a hole in the top and the health department printed off um, voting cards for us with um, a smiley face, a straight face and little heart eye shapes for loved it. And the students get to come up and they actually get to put one of those voting pieces into that box for voting. And then we give them a I tried it sticker to wear during the day. Great, lots of different approaches there. Anyone have more questions for these folks? Okay, Alice, go ahead to the next slide. Um, I just wanna say thank you to Beth and Tom and Dan for being here today and sharing your expertise. So valuable to hear about the inspiring work that you're doing. And I look forward to sharing some of that in our upcoming legislative report among the other great work from all of our grantee districts um, that will be finalizing in the next couple of weeks. So you might hear more from me, uh, more phone calls and emails, trying to get great photos and great stories. So keep sharing that um, information with us. And I also okay. wanna point Folks, uh, one last time to our website, 10 uh, where we have a great list of resources that you can access um, to check out some um, other folks who are doing work in the Farm to School movement uh, to really build your Farm to School program. And those resources have been um, compiled by um, have been compiled by 10 cents partners. So they're really uh, shaped around the grant areas that uh, folks are expected to be showing success in. So that's a good place to, to reference. And then also on our website is the Traverse Bay Area Intermediate School District Farm to School link. You can go there um, to share this great expert reviewed curriculum with educators and administrators in your district to really show that farm to school activities can meet uh, teach teachers needs. And um, yeah, so you'll see Diane Connor's email there, um, Diane at groundworkcenter.org. Make sure to reach out to Diane with those stories and photos. And uh, we're excited to share our educator webinar with you all. Um, so thanks for your work, and uh, it's just inspiring to see this farm to school uh, movement uh, really growing in the state of Michigan. And that's all we have for you today.